Yes guys, what's going on? Training at proper gym today with my Delaney. And training push things as well. He has a problem with his rotator cuff like I do. If you have a ro rotator cuff problem yourself, you'll know. Some people can't do flat bends, some people can't do incline bends. Some people can't do dumbbells at all, which is me. A bit of a nightmare. So, that should be decent. I'm going to bring you along to that and film it. I just got here now. If you watch two videos, you'll, rec you'll remember this gym when I did Gym Roulette episode two. Oh yeah, I thought it'd be worth mentioning. With this training video now, I'm going to keep it raw as fuck. Like, not much editing at all. It shouldn't be like point and shoot. So, there's going to be no drastic edits, but, you know, in somewhat way informative. tensing my glutes and like pushing up like that and arching my lumbar spine after I've done that then I'm doing this watch my traps so I'm, I'm actually pinching them together a lot yeah, 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 yeah. first time I did this my traps were killing after my push session <laughs> it was like I'd done back so then now it's like that now that my chest's in front of my shoulders my shoulders aren't going to take over yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean Your fourth set now, innit? Hmm? Your fourth set now, innit? Yep. So what I'm doing on this is I'm going to minimise the amount of abduction that's going on around the shoulder joint. Previously I've had a bit of a rotator cuff injury. I noticed that with, even with Arnold press, which is a weight that you have to, it's an exercise that you have to feel quite light with, it's quite methodical. You're going out like this, and because your shoulder is quite, because your arm is quite far away from the joint, it's just excess pressure on your rotator cuff. And so what I'm finding is, keeping it narrow with the OHPs. Sort of like this, I'm pressing up, it's just like literally almost grazing my face, and then behind me like that. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing your upper traps into it as well, and I believe that's, that's part and parcel of the lift, man, you, it's a compound lift, so. Sweet, man. And then, start position. Feet are level with each other. Elbows are tucked in. And it's like you, you brace up in your back as well. Yeah. So it's almost like there's an argument for hitting your upper chest on this one. Yeah. Your spine. Yeah, I know like what you mean. I, I, yeah. If you look at my head from the side of my neck, it's kind of straight, isn't it? Yeah. Very straight. So you don't want to be like that or over like that. Pressing up. Oh. Bones just just encroaching on that smooth bit. That's it. And when you're pressing it, it's almost like you're pressing it up and back in a way. Yeah. So your head's coming forward and you're feeling it on the top of your traps. Yeah, that's all right. 
absolutely yeah. necessary for growth. What? Three percent. Like, you know, twice a minimum per week. Yeah, or healthy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually better to do the same volume, the same training volume, the same total load. Yeah. Distributed over two three times a week yeah. rather than doing the equivalent of that in one session. Yeah. tens between my legs. I would like do I would do about maybe five reps or something with that. And then straight away take the ten on maybe eight with that. Straight after no straight, reps. Wait, what do you mean like oh, it takes you a minute to like take them yeah, off. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So but like that's heavy. Yeah yeah no it was, it was intense but like that's what you do like you just do shit that you enjoy. That's the whole point. How long was that when you used to do shit like that? Oh I used to go I used to go I've doing loads of crazy shit but I just well, like, don't be crazy, you're crazy, shit. Nah, that's it. Point, like, that's it. Yeah. You're still taking the box of, like, rest of overload and shit. Oh my god. A couple of ways you can do them, actually. You gotta be thumbs, you can grab it properly. And again, you're arching your back. Yeah. And then you find that you're holding your hands and that's naturally a better way to actually chest. You have your elbows down and your hands sort of open. So you kind of like you can't be like swimming like back and yeah. So I've always I would be told like like your pinkies. Yeah. Trying to like bring Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do you know what um, do you know what's the third? It's if if you for a ride a minute now, I'd rather than hard. I think I know who he is, yeah. Yeah, but then like he's mad a lot of form. And he's saying like how important it is you know, Closing in, just if like keeping that open all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because if you were if you were to look at anatomy chart, you would see exactly, you would see straight away why your chest is is formulated to do that. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking a big wide muscle that goes right there. One shape like that, so it's like pulling. Yeah. But one shoot. But once you're pushing directly against the gravity of it, like halfway, then it's 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 harder. So you should get caught the way and it's gone. Because like you, gone, you? you explode from here, and that's like momentum, do you know what I mean? With a with a cable it's a lot different. It's cable, I would really cables much better actually. Yeah, they're but they're I do hard. these because I just want to hold dumbbells yeah. and that has its own benefits, just handling weights all the time. Yeah, Strength benefits, you know what I mean? Definitely. In a while, though, with the, well, the easy push, push, push. with the uh, push. Uh, you keep it fairly light on this, yeah. Ish, yeah, yeah, because I feel like well, on dumbbells anyway, because you can just feel it in your elbow, man. It's not, uh, sometimes it feels a bit awkward.
Right, let's stayed on. I'm, I'm, for me, man, it was warm in there. It was decent as well, like, some of the shit Mike knows, like, with certain, you know, when you're doing certain exercises, it can be like the little things that you change, and it just makes a massive difference. I mean, some of you should know that anyway, but, you know, just getting an insight on someone else's, like, views on it, do you know what I mean? Also, as well, like, saying cause he's got the rotator cuff injury as well, it's like, even though it's a similar injury, different things target and aggravated, do you know what I mean? So, that nah, was decent workout as well. So I just realised it's a few days on it, and I didn't even close the video, man. Didn't even close it. How rude. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I didn't want to go mad to be editing. I thought I'd keep it raw as fuck and just have that type of video rather than like the editing and, you know, like, sick angles and all that shit. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you also learned something if you are anyone else out there with or take off injuries or whatever. Maybe in a few months as well, I'll be able to do another one uh, with Mike. Different session and I think I'd want to make it a bit more informative as well with as to why this exercise, why this specific regime, you know. Because in this one today, only really elaborated on the overhead press when it came to the rotator cuff. But with the certain exercises we was doing, they are in some what way aimed around to not aggravate the rotator cuff. Stuff like inclined press, especially with dumbbells and even bench, can aggravate it. As for myself, it's not too bad, but as for him, he was saying, like, you know, it can aggravate it for him. Whereas for him, decline neglects his delt and it concentrates on his chest a lot more. Whereas with me, I find it aggravates my rotator cuff more. So, you know, it's crazy how different it can be despite having a very similar injury. Anyway. Thanks a lot for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. It massively helps. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one.